Hello everybody, Guru Guru Surplus here, and today I want to show you all my World War One Russian belt. This is one of the last items, actually no, this is the last item from that auction lot that I've been talking about, the one where I got my two World War One Russian shovels, along with my World War One Russian bandolier. Um, I've been procrastinating on this, or I guess sitting on this item for a bit, because every time that I wanted to show it, um, I got something new. Like, it was going to be after I showed the bandolier, but then I ended up getting that stick grenade and, you know, a whole lot of stuff happened. But I finally have this here to show you today. Um, and as you saw in my community post, which you should start checking those out because I'm going to start posting there a little bit more. Not really images on like, not really images of or stuff about my collection, but about if I miss a video or something or if there's a change in the upload schedule. But anyway, let's get into this item. Also, it's kind of funny that I've had this for three months and haven't showed it, but anyway. So, this is a World War I Russian belt. As you can see, this one has its complete belt. A lot of them you just find are just the belt buckles. So, as you can see, the belt is um, it's in a little bit rough shape as it is cracking. and uh, Some of the stitching has started to kind of rot away. You can still unroll it, however, which is a very nice thing um, when it comes to buying World War I belts. Um, you can see... It's definitely shrunk over time because that is a very small belt. But then again, people were very small back in the day. So it could be either of those. Although I think the leather definitely has shrunk on the belt as some leather shrinks over time. It's why World War I German gas masks um, kind of become smaller over the years. But it is also because people were just a lot smaller back during World War I. So I zoomed in here to show you, you can see that the Belt buckle is basically just a sheet of brass that has the Imperial Eagle stamped. As you can see it's indented right here and then it's stamped on uh, the side. On this side, yeah. And um, basically you have a bar welded right there that goes through this uh, little loop in the belt. Unlike the German belts, as I said, you can't remove um, you can't remove this belt buckle without doing undoing the stitching. And um, right there's the hook where um, this little bar kind of just... Yeah, hooks on like that and that's basically all there is to the belt buckle there's not much to them as they're um very simple belt buckles but i don't think there's much more else i could say about the belt buckle as it's a pretty simplistic item you know the belt buckle is not really um i guess that interesting and then the belt is obviously just your typical leather belt um just a different design you know all world war one belts are basically the same it's really the belt buckles that are different I do want to get some more of the World War One Russian belt buckles, like the ones from the Craig, Craig's Marine and the artillery and stuff. Um, but those will be long, later on down the line, as they're about a hundred bucks from time to time. Especially because I want to get one in really good shape and not relic. Um, kind of want you to still be able to see the brass, I guess you could say. But um, I guess that's the reason I put this off. I don't really have much I can say about it. Also, sorry for my voice sounding like this. I was uh, I was yelling a lot <laughs> with my friends and stuff earlier. So, but if you enjoyed this video, I'll see you in the next one and happy collecting.